Hello Loom Knitters! This video is about how to knit a diagonal rib stitch cowl in the round. It has rib stitch borders at the top and bottom, and it has a diagonal rib stitch in the body of the cowl, and that's made using an easy four row repeat. I'm calling this pattern my spin cowl, and if you want more information about this pattern, you can see the description below. My name's Catherine, and thanks so much for watching Ms. Yarn. Before we get started, I'd like to ask you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. That really helps me out. During this video, we're going to cover number one, how to cast on using the chain cast on. Number two, how to do the first rib stitch border. Number three, how to do the two by two diagonal rib stitch. Number four, how to do the last rib stitch border. And number five, how to bind off using the stretchy bind off. For the supplies, you're going to need a 52 peg loom. I use the Martha Stewart loom, but you can also use a loom that has 40, 44, or 48 pegs too. You'll need one ball of yarn and you'll need a hook, a pair of scissors, and a yarn needle. So let's get started. So before we cast on, let's look at the loom. I put pegs in every other hole and I marked peg one with some green tape. And I also found it helpful to mark every fourth peg since we'll be doing a four stitch repeat, but that's up to you. To start your chain cast on, you'll make a slip knot with a tail of at least six inches and you'll put it on peg one. You'll put the tail in the middle of the loom and you'll keep your working yarn in front. Then you're going to take your hook and you're going to dive into that first loop as if you're going to purl. So you're going to grab the working yarn, you're going to pull it upwards and make a big loop that's going to go behind peg two. So with your right hand, you're just going to put a few fingers through, um, through that loop. And with your left hand, you're going to feed the working yarn through pegs two and three, and you're going to grab that yarn with your right hand to pull on it to make a new loop. And this big loop is going to go behind peg three. And then you're going to feed the working yarn through pegs three and four. And then you'll pull on that yarn with your right hand uh, to make another big loop at the back. It's going behind peg four this time. And then with your left hand, you feed the working yarn again through the pegs of your loom to make another big loop. This time it'll go behind peg five. You might find it less awkward to do a chain cast on with both of your hands outside of the loom so you have more room. So I'll link to a video from Deborah Shaw to show you how to do that. And if you want to do the chain cast on with a crochet hook instead, that's also a great idea. Let me link to a video from Luma Hat to help you out. So now you can pause your video and continue on your own with the chain cast on. And let's meet again when we're closer to peg 52. So I'm just finishing up my chain cast on. And then so I'm wrapping the very last peg, which is peg 52. And with that final loop, I'm just going to place it on top of peg one. You'll see two loops on peg one, which is fine. And you'll see one strand of yarn on the outside of your pegs and two strands on the inside of your pegs. And now my chain cast on is done. So now we're ready for the first rib stitch border, and that means we're going to do a knit one, purl one sequence. So we're going to be using the e-wrap version of the knit stitch. So we're going to e-wrap uh, peg one, and then we're going to knit over with those two bottom loops. And then we're going to purl on peg two, which means we place the working yarn just below that loop on peg two. We're going to dive in with our hook to grab that working yarn and we're going to pull that yarn upwards to make a new loop. We take the old loop off of the peg and we put the new loop on the peg and then we tighten it up. And then we're going to knit peg three. And then we're going to purl peg four.
So you're going to continue with this knit one, purl one sequence, and you're going to do six rows in total. So let's meet again when we're ready to start row seven for the diagonal rib stitch, which will be the body of the cowl. So see you soon. So at this point, you've completed a six row single rib stitch border, and now we're moving on to row seven. We're going to do a two by two diagonal rib stitch, which means we're going to do a knit two, purl two sequence. So let's knit pegs one and two with E-wraps. And then let's purl pegs three and four. So that's the four stitch repeat for the first row of this four row repeat. So just keep alternating your pairs of knit stitches and purl stitches. And let's meet again when you're finished with this row. So at this point, we finished row seven and we're ready to start row eight. So to make the diagonal, we need to shift over our pairs of knit stitches and purl stitches. So this means that we knit peg one, and then we purl pegs two and three. And then we'll knit peg four. And that's your four stitch repeat. So on your own, you're going to continue alternating these pairs of knit stitches and purl stitches. And we'll meet again when you've finished row eight. So here we finished row eight and we're ready to start row nine. For row nine, you're going to purl pegs one and two. and then you knit pegs three and four. And you can e-wrap two pegs at a time, just as I've done here. You could have even done that um, in earlier rows as well. So you're going to continue alternating these pairs of purl stitches and knit stitches all the way around the loom. We'll meet again once we've finished row nine. So at this point, we've completed row nine and we're ready to begin row 10. So for row 10, you're going to purl peg one, and then you knit pegs two and three. And then you purl peg four. So you're going to continue with this pattern all the way around the loom. And that's the four row repeat of the diagonal rib stitch. So when you're ready to do row 11, you're going to do the same thing as row seven. So you'll do this four row repeat for a total of seven times. So you have six more times to go. Now you can do this two by two diagonal rib stitch on your own. And after you've completed row 34, let's meet again for row 35 and we'll start the other rib stitch border together. So now we've finished several rounds of the diagonal rib stitch and we do see a bit of a line between the stitches on pegs one and 52, but I don't think it's very noticeable. And now we're ready to start the last rib stitch border. So we're just going to copy what we did for rows one through six. So that means we're going to do a knit one, purl one sequence for another six rows. So we knit peg one and we purl peg two. So let's knit on our own for these six rows of the rib stitch border, and let's meet when we're finished with row 40. So here we finish our last rib stitch border and things look great so far. And so now it's time for the stretchy bind off. 
We're going to need to cut our yarn, so let's wrap the yarn two and a half times around the loom and then cut it off. You don't need to wrap your loom three full times because that's just going to create extra effort for you. That's not necessary. Next, we're going to thread our yarn needle. I sometimes do this step with a loom hook, but I think it's easier to demonstrate with a needle. So what's important for this stretchy bind off is that you remember these three words, down, up, behind. Okay, so that's down, up, behind. So put your needle down peg one, then up peg 52, then behind peg one. Okay, great. So next, you're going to sew down peg two, up peg one, then behind peg two. You're going to sew down peg three and you're keeping things a little bit tight. Up peg two, behind peg three. Next, we sew down peg four, up peg three, and behind peg four. So we're gonna continue with this pattern. We're going down on the peg on the left, up on the peg on the right, and then behind the peg on the left. So continue sewing like this, going down, up, behind, and work your way all around the loom and we'll meet when we're closer to peg 52. So here, as you can see, I've gone ahead and I'm just finishing off the stretchy bind off. So for me, my next step is to sew down peg 52. up peg 51, then behind peg 52, then down peg one, and now that's it. Now with our loom hook, we're going to remove the cowl from the loom. So let's start on peg two and let's just take off every stitch off of every peg and we'll go all the way around the loom. So here I've gone ahead and I'm just taking off the last loops off of the loom. Okay, great, so let's get the loom out of the way. So let's have a look at our work. So this is the wrong side of the cowl. So let's flip it so that we can see the right side of the cowl. So we see a really nice diagonal rib stitch body. We see the rib stitch borders. Um, I think it turned out really nicely. Um, you might see a little bit of a line between pegs one and 52, but I think it doesn't, it doesn't show up much. 
Let's turn the cowl inside out so that we can weave in those tails. So we'll start by weaving in the tail from the stretchy bind off. Let's cut off some of this extra yarn. And then we're going to bring our needle through one of the bind off stitches to bring it to this side of the cowl. And then we're going to go up one of these rib stitches because we want to reach the middle of the cowl because I'm going to tie the two tails of the cowl together. And then we're going to sew through these bumps to get to the middle of the cowl. So let's leave the tail sticking out like that for now and let's take our yarn needle off of that tail so we can use it to weave in the other tail. So let's thread the needle again. And again, we wanna bring that yarn towards the inside. So I'm gonna like find that loop, that very last loop and put the thread through the loop so that the thread is coming out on the wrong side of the cowl. And then again, I'm going to go up one of the rib stitches I'm going to meet the other tail and then I'm going to tie a really good knot by pulling on all four strands. And then I'm going to cut it off and that will be it. So let's turn the cowl right side out. So now the diagonal rib stitch cowl is done. So if you like this video and want to follow along with a written pattern for the spin cowl, please see the description below.